Hey brothers and sisters, I hope you're doing good. Um, so I had started to record this video and then it like got messed up. So I'm starting over it. I'm starting over again. Um, but basically what I had said in my other video was just that I'm going to try doing a video like in this format because I have a sister in Christ who sometimes does hers like this and I always find it really helpful and really encouraging. Um, so I'm going to try this. So you guys let me know if this is helpful for you or if um, the other type of message is more helpful. I mean, I personally think this is, but just either way, um, I'm still going to be giving the messages that Jesus puts on my heart, um, regardless if it's like this or if it's like the other type of message. But um, yeah, so basically Je Jesus has been teaching me so much about spiritual warfare and I've been getting a lot of questions about um, things that pertain to spiritual warfare, although people are not wording it like that. Um, they may not be to the point that they understand that it is spiritual warfare because we know that God is spirit and we are spirit. Um, so we have to understand spiritual warfare and how to fight against uh, the devil and uh, demonic spirits because if we don't, they can easily beat us up and make us become very ineffective for God's kingdom. Um, and Paul even talks about that. I believe it's in Ephesians. He talks about we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Um, so it definitely is a spiritual battle and we have to um, we have to fight daily. Uh, so what God, what Jesus has really been teaching me, and this has always been a really difficult thing for me, um, is emotions. I have always, I've always had a very, I've always been very sensitive to emotions. I've always had a very difficult time overcoming my emotions. Um, and Jesus is really teaching me and giving me a lot of clarity on dealing with emotions and oppressive spirits. Um, and so I want to share what he has been teaching me about it. Uh, some things I wrote here was discouraging spirits, endure, don't give in. It's a spiritual battle. Our emotions um, don't feed spirits, don't agree with them, starve them. They will flee. So yeah, what Jesus has been showing me is things like anger, sadness, depression, um, suicidal thoughts, just overwhelming feelings of darkness um, and like sadness and stuff like that. In anger, those are all emotions that can rise up out of our flesh and be really, really oppressive. And a lot of times in the past, I have always given in, I give in to these emotions and these um, oppressive spirits. I give in to them. I, um, I start to agree with them, like depress, uh, depressing or sad spirits. Like I will be having a, per it will be a perfectly beautiful day outside. Jesus is providing all of my physical needs and more. But for some reason, I literally just feel so depressed. And then I just start agreeing with the spirit. Like, yeah, today's a terrible day. Like I would just start, you know, giving in. They would start overwhelming me. And eventually, if you start agreeing and um, not fighting off these emotions and these spiritual attacks, these oppressive spirits, they start to overcome you. And then those spirits, they start leading into worse things like for sadness, you know, it can lead into a really severe depression where you're feeling suicidal. You're getting a lot of suicidal thoughts. Um, even for uh, lust, you know, it can be start turning into um you actually doing like lustful things or lusting after others or committing adultery or fornication or if it is anger it could start turning into you being physically violent or just i mean all of the emotions that can rise up in us it can it will turn into sin if you don't eventually if you don't 
starve it out if you don't learn how to overcome in jesus it will turn into sin Um, and we just have to recognize that these emotions we have to overcome like my sister in christ was telling me the other day how these two demons got cast out of these um guys and these guys didn't even know each other but the demons did know each other because they all know each other they're all in the spiritual realm and the person who cast them out asked the demons each of them separately how do you like how do you get into people how do you overcome them and the demons told them the person that was casting them out we deceive them we deceive them through their feelings so we have to understand that when the enemy comes to us with these discouraging thoughts making us feel like we're worthless making us feel just making us have terrible feelings we have to recognize them for what they are those don't come from jesus those oppressive spirits do not come from our father they don't come from jesus christ and I used to, my husband used to always try to tell me, Kristen, you've got, you've just got to realize like, these are just your emotions. And I would always just like be like, whatever, you don't understand. Like, this is how I feel. But it, it wasn't until Jesus like really taught it to me and revealed it to me that we've got to learn to rule over these emotions and we can do it. But one of the key things also is the more that you feed them, the more that you dwell on it, the more that you don't immediately rebuke it and you start agreeing with it, the, the stronger they're going to become. Um, and they're going to bring in other oppressive spirits to start oppressing you. So it is just so important that like, if one of them comes like yesterday, um, I my baby was crying, like throwing a humongous tantrum. I was trying to cook dinner at that time. And I just started to get really, really overwhelmed. Like I was starting to get really frustrated. And the devil in my own flesh rose up trying to get me to be act out in anger. And I just kept enduring. I just kept enduring with Jesus. And it did not come out as anger. It came out as crying. Um, but that's not ungodly. What is ungodly is to act out in those oppressive emotions, to act out in an ungodly way. I would rather cry out of frustration than to act out in ungodly anger. So we have to just work with Jesus to endure these emotions when they come so that they don't lead to sin. And we've got to understand that the enemy is going to lie. He is going to accuse us. And he wants us to get him to believe him. Because if we believe him, that's exactly where he wants us. Because I have had so many times in my walk where I'm being obedient to Jesus. Jesus has not told me that I'm in sin. I repeatedly have asked him, you know, am I doing anything that's unpleasing to you? And he doesn't show me anything. And I... I'm not doing anything that he has shown me that I'm not supposed to be doing. But yeah, I'm still having all this condemnation. And it's the enemy telling you all these lies, accusing you. And he wants you to believe him. Because if he can get you to believe him, you become really vulnerable to sin, um, to spiritual attacks from the enemy. You become really vulnerable to your own flesh, to not being able to have the strength and the will And you can't even really abide in Jesus because you're blocked. You're blocked because the devil has stolen your faith. You become, that's where he wants you. He wants to get you faithless so that you are believing his lies and you don't have any faith. You have to hold up your shield of faith. And that's, that's exactly where he wants you is to put your shield down. He wants you to put the shield of faith down so that he can start shooting those fiery darts at you. And then you no longer are effective for God's kingdom. Um, and that is what it talks about in Ephesians, God's armor. You guys can read all of this. It's Ephesians 6 um, talking about God's armor. And it says here, 
Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Having done all to stand. That means you, that means they are putting up a fight and you are doing all you can to stand against them. And sometimes it is very difficult. Sometimes they oppress you for hours, for days, but you have to do all you can to stand and hang on to the truth, the truth of Jesus. You've got to hang on to the truth, knowing that those emotions will pass. The mo- you have, but you can't in- you can't give in though, because when you give in, like I said, they get more power. You've got to endure, just knowing the truth, hanging on to the truth of Jesus. Endure, do all you can to stand against them. Um, stand therefore. See, I didn't even know that it said this next. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness, put on the breastplate of righteousness. So if you know that you are not sinning, you are not aware of any sin that you're doing that Jesus has shown you. And you're continually asking him, am I unpleasing to you? Did I do something wrong? Like, why am I feeling so depressed? What did I do? Don't, and he's not showing you anything. Don't let the devil come in and condemn you and say that, yeah, you're not, you're living in sin or this or that, or just accuse you of things that you know aren't true. Don't let him get in your mind like that. If Jesus has not told you anything, has not shown you anything that you're doing that's wrong don't let him condemn you like that but if you are doing something that's wrong obviously you know work it out with jesus and stop doing that thing be obedient to him but that's why it says put on the breastplate of righteousness because we do have to walk in righteousness um but watch out for false condemnation because the enemy tries to attack me a lot with that Um, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one literally it says above all taking the shield of faith because it is so important when we walk with jesus that we do not ever put down our shield of faith because when you put down your shield of faith the enemy you are an open target for the enemy and he is going to come at you with everything and we have to understand that these fiery darts come as spiritual attacks our emotions our flesh rising up he works through other people For me, he has always been able to get me through my emotions. And that's why I feel very passionate about this particular message because Jesus has finally given me clarity and revelation on it. That it is all about your faith. It's about never putting your shield down. If you know that Jesus has not told you that you're doing anything wrong, don't let him get in your mind don't let the enemy get in your mind you have to endure and fight off those accusations and those lies from the enemy or else he has you right where he wants you you can't fight you're not in the battle if you've put your your shield down you are completely open to attack i mean to attacks from him um you're not out there fighting with the sword of the spirit so I hope that helps those of you who may be struggling with emotions. And I have a few other scriptures here that I um, wrote down or put typed out. Um, Here's one in James. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be complete that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. See, Jesus allows the devil to test us like that. Like a lot of the times I would be thinking, well, why, like Jesus, why are you letting this happen to me? Like, why are you, why do I feel so sad? Why are you not coming to comfort me? Why do I not feel your presence? Because sometimes Jesus allows the devil to put, to do that to us so that our faith can be tested and that it will produce patience it will produce endurance in us to get through it and not listen to the lies, not listen to the accusation. But if we just go on and listen, well, you know what? Where is our faith? Where is our faith in Jesus? 
So understand that when trials like this happen, your faith is being tested so that you can learn how to endure and learn how to be patient and learn how to persevere through it. Which believe me, brothers and sisters, it is very difficult and it is it is difficult. That's all. That's the only word I can use to describe it. We also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. In another translation, I don't know which one it is. I believe this scripture says that it also produces or maybe it's not that one. I don't know. In one of them, it talks about like adding to your faith self-control. And that is something that has taken me so much time to learn is that through these trials and tribulations, we have to learn self-control. And that is particularly with emotions. We have to learn self-control. We have to get in control of them. We have to endure and we have to persevere. Add to our faith, our faith self-control, godliness, um, perseverance. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found praise honor and glory at the revelation of jesus christ so when jesus said the baptism of the holy spirit and fire we are given the holy spirit the baptism of the holy spirit he gives us his spirit inside of us to empower us and give us power but the baptism of the holy spirit and fire we really need to understand what that fire is because that fire is right right here be uh, though it is tested by fire and that that fire is the trials and tribulation we it is necessary for us to go through the fire because of all these things that we've been talking about our faith has to be refined it has to be purified. Jesus has to purge and purify out of us everything that doesn't please him. And the only way to purify gold is through fire. So brothers and sisters, we've got to understand that we truly are being refined. And he has given us his Holy Spirit so that we can withstand and we can make it through this fire. We can overcome. But that does not mean it's going to be any less hot when we're, in the, when we're in that fire. It hurts. It hurts and it is difficult. But through him, if we abide in him, we can overcome. We can get through this fire and know that this fire is necessary if we are not purified as pure gold, we will not enter God's kingdom. So it is very necessary. And we all are going to pass through this fire. All the brothers and sisters are going through this. We all have to be refined. We have to be purified and made white. Period. Uh, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance. See, so we have to learn self-control. And once we learn self-control, we learn how to persevere in the faith. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. So that is a kind of a lot to take in but um you know this is how we we keep from stumbling we keep from falling into sin is we have to go through these trials and we have to 
learn perseverance and we have to learn godliness and brotherly kindness and love and um you know it it takes time and it takes jesus has to teach it to you and it is very painful it is difficult you know but we've got to persevere and we've got to just understand that our feelings are from the flesh our feelings rise up out of our flesh our emotions and we've got to learn to rule over it so that we can continue holding up our shield of faith and we can take the sword of the spirit and we can continue fighting the battle advancing against kingdoms of darkness and being effective for god's kingdom but in order to be effective we have to learn how to overcome our emotions and our feelings and understand that the enemy tries to deceive us he tries to attack us and oppress us through our feelings and if we stay in prayer with jesus we stay talking to him and we stay abiding in him we stay seeking after his truth and his righteousness and his plans and asking him to keep us pure before him and humble we're not going to be falling into sin. We're not going to be stumbling around. We're going to be abiding in him and overcoming. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not compre- comprehend it. Yeah, we cannot we have to overcome darkness with light. We have to overcome the enemy with the truth. The truth of Jesus Christ and the power that he gives us. That is how we overcome him. So I hope this message um, blesses you. I hope it edifies you. Um, when I, when Jesus finally revealed this to me, it was literally like I told my sister in Christ the other day. It was literally like I put on a bulletproof vest. And I did, essentially, because I realized how much I had, I lost my shield, basically, at one point. I mean, the devil was just taking punches at me left and right. He was trying to kill me. I was getting beat up bad. And a lot of it was through my own emotions and my own feelings. And now that I understand his schemes and his games and his lies and his accusations, he's not going to be able to get me like that anymore because I have my shield of faith. And I know, I know the truth. I am hanging on to the truth of Jesus and I am not going to let him steal it and take it away from me. I'm not going to let him falsely accuse me. And brothers and sisters, don't let him do that to you either. Don't let him tell you lies. Um, I had somebody yesterday who may even be watching this uh, video or listening to this video that said they don't know if they've truly repented. Well, go to Jesus. Get on your knees. Ask him, what, what am, what, show me what is unpleasing to you. And as soon as he shows you, immediately stop doing that ask for the power of the holy spirit ask for the baptism of the holy spirit ask him for power to stop and then stop be obedient to what he tells you but if you're walking in obedience and you truly you truly in your heart do not know what else jesus has told you to stop doing don't let the devil keep accusing you that you haven't repented if you know that you're doing what jesus has already shown you to do don't let him come and condemn you keep talking to jesus don't lose faith don't let him attack your faith so um yeah i hope this helps you guys